So many of you have heard of neuroplasticity. A nice way that I like to look at this idea is that on the one hand, if we have a situation or stimulus that we have not yet navigated or maneuvered before, and especially if this, whatever this is, happens in a consistent way, then our brain body system has to figure out how to get resources to the right circuits, to the right brain body kind of systems in order for us to maneuver and navigate that situation, that challenge. So that can be uh, a building of new pathways in a sense. On the other hand, if we are not being challenged, if there is not enough of situations that exceed what we already know how to do. So a lot of situations where they're very familiar, very comfortable, everything is already wired, then there's actually can be a pruning away. So that's also a form of neuroplasticity where almost like an atrophying, there's a uh, less of some circuits that are gonna form. So these are both different types of neuroplasticity. One happens where we gain kind of new circuits, new connection in the face of challenge and in order to maneuver and manipulate different situations and environments. And the other kind of neuroplasticity is like a pruning away. So a different configuration of circuits, but due to lack of challenge and lack of stimulus. So um, that is really the idea of neuroplasticity. It's a really beautiful feature of the human brain. We are all, many species are experience dependent, but there are very specific kind of sophisticated types of networks that humans have that allow us to learn above and beyond levels that any other species has. So it's something that allows us to be what is called universal constructors. We have a form of general intelligence, generalized intelligence, which means that we don't have to have a certain amount of data in order to really know how to do something. We can take certain types of almost concepts and different types of information and knowledge and then apply that to more and more complex kinds of situations. We can actually rise above a certain level to have a, like a metacognition and meta kind of intelligence. And that does have a lot to do with the fact that we're experience dependent, meaning that we're not born with all of the circuitry that we're gonna use for the rest of our lives. In fact, there's a lot that has to come through experience. And this has a good and a bad side to it. It means that we are very sensitive to our early environments, which means that our early environments matter a lot. Um, and unfortunately, there's not always a great situation that every child is born into. There can be lack of stimulus or too much of a certain kind of negative type of stimulus. Um, but the pro to that kind of configuration for the human species is that we have a level of uh, customization and specialization that can occur through this experience dependent kind of neuroplasticity. And it's something that we get to benefit from for the rest of our lives. It gets harder to build new circuits as we get older uh, because they have to compete with what's already established. So there's like a competition that happens for resources, but it's not impossible, it can take more effort. So that's just a big global overview of neuroplasticity. I talk a lot more about it in my book. Uh, we talk about orphans and different studies that have happened and why it's so important for us to learn how to communicate uh, internally with what we're saying to ourselves as well as what we receive from others and what we put out to others as a way to actually wire our brains in really adaptive resilient ways so um, that's just a little bit on that and there are more chapters and uh, concepts to come so thanks for joining me